Hi guys, how are we doing? Mr. Kane here. Morning guys, Mrs. G. And we're up to Unit 9, Stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. What, what, what language is that, Mr. Kane? Uh, I think it's English. I think it's German. Uh, probably. It's highly German to me. It's German from the, the, German from the German word Stoich, which yeah. means to eat. Is that what that means? Uh, usually in Germany, because most of the words mean it, it's a different way to eat meat. Oh. You know, to eat sausage, to eat meat, to eat kielbasa, to eat sausage. There, yeah. I'll have to try that out someday. I'll have to go to Germany. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear anyhow. Everything's everything's uh, meat-oriented. Yeah. We need to define what stoichiometry is. So Mrs. G already said it's a German word. Uh, and describe why it's important. Uh, we need to relate stoichiometry to balanced chemical equations. Mm, balanced chemical equations. Oh, yep, yep, balanced. That was the thing that we just did. Yep, it, that's why we learned it first. Yeah, it's not too hard either. Uh, we identify and solve prob different types of stoichiometry problems. And these are mole-to-mole -mole ratio problems. All right. Mass-volume-particle-to-mole ratio problems. All right. And we also do something called limiting reactants okay. and percent. Yield. All right, so those are the different mm. types of stoic problems. Sounds right. good. And at least percent yield sounds like it's going to be easy, right? Yeah, percentage, part over whole times 100. Mm, so so that's, that's going to be good. So it's got to be similar to that. The other two-thirds sounds like mole problems yeah. on anabolic steroids. Mm, okay. Just early in the morning. Mm -hmm. You want to make a cheese sandwich. You only want one piece of cheese and two slices of bread. Okay. How many sandwiches could you had only seven slices of bread? Well, two slices of bread per sandwich. So I'd be able to make three sandwiches with left over. Is that correct? Seven slices. And like you said, you have two slices per one. Sammy. Oh my goodness, you are doing dimensional analysis, dimensional analysis to figure out how many sandwiches we can make. Yeah, so we can get three and a half Sammies. Well, true, I wasn't thinking of that last, I suppose you could cut it in half. I suppose you could cut it in half, but if you wanted whole sandwiches, you'd have to say, you know, sig fig rules don't matter here, so we go three yeah, Sammies, because these are, these are counted numbers, so there's no sig figs in here anywhere. Uh -huh. So I could have said three and a half Sammies. Okay, but, um, uh, cut that one slice in half. We're going to say three Sammies, because we want whole Sammies. Okay. Maybe we're having a party. Uh, a little cheese sandwich party. It's a pretty cheap party. Mm, it's a cheesy Okay, so. Okay, so what if there were only six pieces of cheese? How many sammies could we make then? So six pieces of cheese along with the seven slices of bread? No, I think this is just a completely separate, separate part. Okay, so with excess bread? Six cheese. With excess bread, yeah, because the first one was assuming excess cheese. Okay. So this one's assuming excess bread. Okay, so how many sandwiches can we make if we only have six pieces of cheese and excess bread, so plenty of bread to choose from, and we only want one piece of cheese? One piece of cheese per sandwich, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's six sandwiches. That's six sandwiches. That's easy. That's easy. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so let's say that we've said that there were seven slices of bread and six slices of cheese. Oh, well, so that would change all the math, wouldn't it? So what if these two weren't separate questions? What if they were the same question? Yeah, that would be different. Well, if they were the same question, then, how many sandwiches could be made if you had only seven slices of bread and six Cheese. You still have to do the math for both of them, right? Yeah. And theoretically, yeah. theoretically, you can only make the least amount of sandwiches, right? You'd still be stuck with three sandwiches. Yeah. So theoretically. Yeah, the bread would tell you how much you could make. You ran out of bread. Uh huh. You ran out of bread. So theoretically, you could only make three sandwiches. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'll bet that's the limiting part. Okay. Uh, okay. This mm -hmm. is shaping up to be an that, interesting yeah, unit. Because the thing that limits me, this limits me. Yeah. The amount of bread that I have, I don't have enough bread. Right. So maybe we need to go to the store and buy some bread. Yes, so. Walmart's right down the corner. So this equation tells me that I need two moles of sodium and two moles of water to completely react to make two moles of sodium hydroxide and one mole of hydrogen gas. Okay, so this is a mole-to-mole -mole ratio with the number of moles of substance. Sounds right. Um, oh, another way to look at it, though, is to say that I need two sodium atoms and two water molecules 
to give me two formula units of sodium hydroxide and a molecule of hydrogen. So there's a couple of ways, terminology speaking, that you can say this balanced chemical equation. And one of them is the tiny little pieces like that. Like atoms and molecules yeah. and formula units. And then one of them is my way where we can... Where we can start using mole, mole ratios. Okay. So you can use either term that you want. Yeah, okay. You could use dozens too, right? Ooh, some old guys. Stoichiometry. Uh, who's that, Joseph Black and Daniel Rutherford? The guy on the left is George Washington. <laughs> and then the other guy looks kind of like Jefferson. Yeah, they do look like Washington and Jefferson, yeah. don't they? All right. Uh, these are the uh, forefathers of, uh, not of our nation, but of stoichiometry. Uh, it turns out that uh, stoichiometry is a branch of chemistry. Oh, so it's not German like mm -hmm. I thought. It kind of originates from the Greek. All right, so stoichiometry deals with quantities of substances and chemical reactions. Um, basically, it, count, it deals with measuring them. Uh, things to remember, one mole is the molar mass, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and one mole is 22.4 liters of gases. So that's all part of our mole peller. No, uh -huh, that's all part okay. of the mole peller, and we've done that before. Yep. Okay. Mole ratio problem examples. Commercial ammonia is prepared. This is a do you know mm -hmm. that? Yeah, it's what? some some German guy named Haber, I believe, right? Yeah, the Haber this, process. This is where the Germans come in. Yeah. Uh, so this guy Haber invented this process. So uh, this is a balanced chemical equation. Make sure you always look to see that it's balanced, right? Mr. Yeah, you got to double check to make sure it's balanced. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, six hydrogens. Okay. Because if you don't have a balanced chemical reaction, you can't actually do stoichiometry. Correct. How many moles of hydrogen gas are necessary to make 312 moles of ammonia, assuming excess nitrogen? All right, so Mr. King, mm -hmm. underline assuming excess nitrogen, because that's an important piece of this puzzle. It's assuming that we have plenty of it, right? right? That's what excess means? We have right. lots. Lots and lots. Lots and lots so and lots. This is not technically going to be limiting excess problem, which we will get into later in the video. Right. right. So just a flat out stoichiometry. All right. Start with. Because we got plenty of cheese. Yeah. Plenty okay. of cheese. Plenty of cheese. All right. Start with the number they give you in the problem, which is 312 moles of ammonia. Now, this is where I would advise you would. Uh, no. This is where I would advise a number, a unit, and an identity. Because stoichiometry basically changes the identity of what you work with, correct? That's right. Okay, so I don't have to mess with molar mass because I'm already in the language of mole, the language of the balanced chemical equation. Uh, from the balanced chemical equation, the mole to mole ratio for every three moles of hydrogen gas, I will produce two moles of ammonia gas. Okay. Well, I don't have two moles of ammonia gas. I have 312. So I need to write the mole to mole ratio appropriately to convert from ammonia to hydrogen. Balanced chemical equation, correct? So three moles of hydrogen. Three moles of hydrogen for two moles of ammonia. Okay. That takes care of my moles of ammonia because they cancel, and I'm left with moles of hydrogen. Right. And since it's not asking you for mass of hydrogen, done. Okay, so I can just hit equals 312 times 3 divided by 2 times 3, we get 900. 468? 468 moles of hydrogen. All right, so let me look at this for a little bit. Start with the number, which is always what we've preached every time we've ever done dimensional analysis. Start with the number. Start with the number they give you, which strongly advise number, unit, and identity, because that ratio there from the balanced chemical equation changed your identity from ammonia to hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's the stoichiometry part, isn't it? All right, so the stoichiometry part is the part where I actually am using this ratio, which I got from the balanced chemical equation. That's why we learned how to balance first. Okay. Hey, Everything in its order. All right, how much oxygen is formed by the following reaction is 1.34 moles of hydrogen peroxide decomposes completely. All right, so there's the chemical uh, reaction. It appears balanced. There's coefficients. Yep, two times two is four hydrogens, four hydrogens. Yep, it's balanced. Okay. So, 
we're going to start out by doing exactly what they told us to, 1.34 moles of hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. peroxide. Number and identity, okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to multiply this by a ratio. From the balanced chemical equation, right? Right. We need the mole ratio between oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So it looks like there's one mole of ox oxygen gas for every two moles of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, one quick question, Mr. King. In the previous problem, we underlined that excess whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't see that word in here. How come? You don't need excess because this is a decomposition reaction. It's stoichiometrically the same it's, format. It's going to use the same method to solve it, but uh, the, the, the need for excess is not there because you don't need any excess reactants. Right. You don't have any. You you're just have just, the one. You're going from reactant to product. I've got this one mole of oxygen to two moles of hydrogen peroxide ratio, so I'm going to put two moles of hydrogen peroxide on the bottom and one, one mole of oxygen on the top here. And as you can see, the moles of hydrogen peroxide are going to cancel each other out. They say how much oxygen. I think I'm assuming moles when they ask that. Okay. It'd be easy enough to put in the grams if they ask for grams, wouldn't it? No, right. Just yeah. 0.670 times 32. Yeah. Here, let, let me um uh, let me back it up just a step here. If we get 0 0.670 moles, if we were actually going to try and do this in grams, if they if we assume grams. Like you said, moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. One mole is 32 grams. So we get a slightly different answer there. Wait, wouldn't that be... Oh, no, that'd be one mole. Is that one right there on the one mole? Is that from the balanced chemical equation? Nope. No? One mole is 32.0 grams. That's the molar mass. That is the definition of molar mass. Yep. So the balanced chemical equation only plays into the stoichiometry ratio. Once, correct? yes. It's right. the stoic ratio. This is the stoic ratio right here. Okay. And it's a stoic ratio because I got it from the balanced equation. You know, this is a molar mass. Molar mass. All right. So another question that could be asked is how much water is formed? So in a balanced chemical equation, they could give you anything and ask you the quantity of something else. Right. Because now we're going from a reactant to a different product. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we'd start out with the same 1.34 moles of hydrogen peroxide okay. because they didn't change that on us. And our stoichiometry ratio is going to be slightly different. Yeah. This time we want to know about hydrogen peroxide and water. So we're going to look at hydrogen peroxide and water. Okay. Okay. Which happens to be a 2 to 2 ratio, which means that I'm going to put 2 moles of hydrogen peroxide on the bottom and 2 moles of H2O on the top. Okay. Uh, 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over 1. Yeah. So we're going to get 1.34 moles of water okay. as a final answer here. 